Hello everyone, it's Indeed Inspiring to see you back again. I'm Kushal Sharma, founder of Indeed Inspiring. Along with my team, let's basically start the session of 40 algorithms in 40 minutes. We will have the algorithms in two levels, basics and advanced. Basics will be searching and sorting, advanced will be data science algorithms. Let's start with the basics one. This is a list which will help us to basically maintain the record of all the algorithms. Searching algorithms, linear, we will start with linear one. Let's start with that. So linear search, it is a sequential search. Sequential means it goes from element 1 to 2 to, two, to 3 to 4 to 5. Okay, so this is basically means linear. It sequentially checks for the item to be searched. In this animation, you can see that we want to search for the element 54. So we start from the first positions, then second, then third, then fourth. And we keep on comparing that whether 54 is found or not. Ultimately, we find the 54 at the seventh position. Let's move to the second algorithm, which is binary search. So binary search, binary means two. Okay, so you can see here in the explanation that half interval search. So in half interval search, the whole of the list is basically, you can say not divided exactly, but we go to the half of it and we compare that whatever we are searching, whether it is present on the left hand side or the right hand side. You can see in the diagram that left hand side is smaller values and right hand side are the larger values okay so if that element is present on the right hand side we will we will remove or we will skip all the left hand side elements this is basically binary search let's move towards the next one that is jump search third is jump search jump jump also also here means block okay so block means that we will have a number of elements selected okay so number could be let's say three elements or four elements so at a particular time, we will just walk for four elements and we will sort the four elements. Okay, so jump search is basically work, is work for a block and it sorts it and it identifies whether the element is present in that particular block or not. Let's move to a, towards the next one and that is the fourth algorithm which is interpolation search. Interpolation means that insertion of something of a different nature into something else. For example, if two people are communicating and there is a noise coming from a truck and the truck is pushing up the horn and there is a noise coming. Okay, so this, this is basically interpolation. So in interpolation search, okay, what, what, what happens? It is an algorithm for searching for a key. Okay, key is the item in an array that has been ordered by numerical values assigned to the keys. Okay, so it is, it is basically an improved version of binary search. Okay, so ultimate or the or the base algorithm is binary search in case of interpolation search as well. Another is exponential search. Exponential search, also known as galloping search, doubling search, or strzic search. Why why do we call it exponential or, or galloping or doubling? Because here also we basically search for smaller number of you know elements we will search, but in the next iteration that will become larger okay as a diagram you can see that initially we are searching okay below you can see the blocks are small so we are searching in small number of elements but then the search space will become larger again the search space will become larger okay so therefore it is known as galloping or exponential search because the search space keep on increasing then after that we have sublist search sub means a part Sub means a part. Sub list means a part of a list. So here you can see that we have a list, complete list here. Okay. And inside the complete list, we want to find a sub list. So we want to find 3, 1, 2. This is a list we want to find inside the bigger list. Okay. So this mechanism is basically known as sub list search. Then we have Fibonacci search. Fibonacci is a series. Here you can see Fibonacci series 0, 1, 1, 2. This Fibonacci series works on 0 plus 1 becomes 1. 1 plus 1 becomes 2, 1 plus 2 becomes 3, 2 plus 3 becomes 5. So you can see that the last two elements are added and we get the next element. This is how the Fibonacci search, uh, Fibonacci series is brought upon. Now Fibonacci series is a bit different from all other search. Why? Because why? Because the, the numbers are basically increasing and, and the kind of division, because it is also a divide and conquer, okay. So the, the divisions which are basically which are made up they are not equal okay they are unequal so therefore it is uh, different like binary search binary okay they are two equal halves but here they are unequal okay 
Next is sorting algorithms. Okay, sorting algorithm, the eighth one is selection sort. Okay, selection sort. So selection sort, basically here you can see that in selection sort, we will pick up the minimum element from the group of elements and we will put it into a new array or new list and that will be the sorted list. So first one will be picked because one is the smallest in the array and it will be sorted. Second we will search 2, 4, 3, what is, we will just keep on comparing 2 is the minimum we have found. Okay, so 2 is the minimum, so we will put 2 in the sorted array. Okay, so this is how the selection sort will work. Next one we have bubble sort. Bubble sort is ninth algorithm. Bubble sort here basically two elements are compared and after the comparison the smallest element, okay, smaller element out of two is shifted towards the left. Okay, so what we are doing? Ascending order. Okay, sm smaller we are putting in the left hand side. This will keep on happening, okay, and it will iterate again. Okay, so what do I mean? That this will happen for once and again it will start from the beginning and it will keep on happening till the array is sorted. This is called as bubble sort. Next is 10th one is insertion sort. Insertion sort if you see the word insertion, okay, it is one of the simplest algorithm. So in insertion we will place the element in the right position, okay. So you can see that what is the position of 5? The position of 5 among 6 and 5 is before 6, right? Position of 3 among 5, 6 is before them, okay. So we will try to put the element in the correct position and this is called as insertion algorithm. Now the next one which is 11th one is merge sort. Merge sort here basically divide and conquer algorithm. Okay, so we will divide the algorithm into equal two halves and further we will subdivide into equal two halves. Okay, and we will keep on dividing. And after that we will take the first two elements and first two elements are sorted. Then we will take the second two elements, second two elements will be sorted. Okay, similar way we will keep on doing this. Okay, because uh, whatever sorted are there then again we will take first two sorted lists and then we will merge them. Okay, so this is how the merge sort works. Okay, similar to merge sort we have quick sort. Okay, the only difference in the merge sort and quick sort is there is a difference that here we can basically select a pivot. Okay, and selecting a pivot basically means that uh, you can select the first element as pivot, you can select the last element or you can select a random element or median as pivot. Okay, in the previous one we were not selecting any pivot for dividing but here we are selecting a pivot for dividing and then we perform the uh, sorting okay this is also divide and conquer algorithm quick sort next one that is the 12th one uh, 13th one is heap sort okay so heap sort heap is a data structure okay heap is a data structure so this sort works on heap kind of data structure you can see in the diagram that we are trying to create a heap and based on that heap the data will get sorted okay so here the approach will be maximum element we will find and we will place the maximum element at the end okay with this approach we will we will uh, keep on working okay fine it is again similar to selection sort okay but we will follow the heap data structure here now next one is shell sort okay which is the 14th algorithm shell sort means shell means again it, it is a variant of insertion sort okay uh, in insertion sort what happens that we move elements okay one position ahead in insertion sort but in shell sort we make the array edge sorted okay so edge can be a number okay edge can be let's say four or five okay so we we take a value of edge and then we keep the red we keep producing the value of edge until it becomes one so that the whole of the array is is sorted okay so this is a variant of insertion sort called as shell sort next that is the 15th one which is radix sort in radix sort this is different from all other why it is different because it does not work on comparison it works on it works on the place value okay zeroth place value first place value second place value okay so if you have 8 number 80 number and 800 number okay so it will sort on the basis of ones place so in 8 the ones place is 8 only in 80 0 in 800 0 then 10th place in 8 there is no 10th place in 80 the 10th place is the tenth place is eight. In eight hundred, the tenth place is zero. Okay, so so whatever number of you know digits you will have, okay, it it will have those many iterations, and it will it will basically uh, sort the numbers on the basis of their place values: ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, on the basis of that. This is called as radix sort. Now let us move towards the advanced. Okay, that is data, data science algorithms, and here we will start with support vector machines. Support vector machines are basically 
uh, again they 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 are they are called as supervised okay supervised basically means that you have the input and output already given and based upon the input output data now your algorithm will work okay so this support vector machine works on that kind of data in in support vector machines we have we have hyperplanes okay so hyperplane basically means decision boundary you can see in the diagram we have uh, some green colored uh, circular data and we have uh, square blue color data okay and between them there is a line and this particular line is called as hyperplane okay and then after that after that line okay just next to them you can see that we have two lines they are dotted lines and they are basically touching up the last ending point of the data okay these are called as margins okay they are called as margins okay in the second diagram we are trying to draw better margins you can see here we are trying to draw better margins okay better means that the distance between the margins should be maximum okay so that that means it is better then uh, the margins are drawn with the help of uh, this particular data point this particular data point okay and here with this blue data point and with this blue data point and this one okay these are called as support vectors okay they, they are called as support vectors Test, fine and we make use of a kernel function in order to do this okay now here in the diagram you can see that this is a classification algorithm it is classifying two different types of data sets okay this is svm okay next one okay is basically regression analysis okay so regression we will see the 17th algorithm linear regression but before that uh, we should we should have knowledge of uh, the term independent variables dependent variables regression lines outliers multi collinearity underfitting and overfitting okay these are the concepts which comes under regression analytics okay so let's basically just understand independent variable and dependent variable independent variable is y which is output and dependent variable okay i'm sorry independent variable is x that is input and in and dependent variable is y that is output x can be 1 2 3 and n that means the independent variables can be many okay let's now start with okay uh, the linear regression in linear regression we will have two algorithms one is simple linear and another is multilinear regression okay so in simple linear regression we will have only one input and one output for example let's say if it is raining will you go out yes or no no let's say no okay if it is not raining will you go out yes okay so what is happening okay uh, the, 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 the the concept here is that uh, based upon the input only one output is there okay that is called as uh, Okay, simple linear regression okay let's say if you uh, let's take regression example okay let's say if you if you run with a speed of uh, 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 20 kilometers per hour okay then will you reach on time okay how much time will it take and then if you if you are running with a speed of 10 kilometers per hour how much time will it take only one input and how much time only one output okay this is called as linear regression the equation is like this okay we have only one x here okay and only one y here and other parameters okay so so here you can see beta 1 is population slope and beta 0 is population intercept okay and there could be some error term that is epsilon here okay now let us move towards the multiple linear okay this is basically our uh, 18th algorithm okay multiple linear so in, in multiple linear what happens we have multiple x okay multiple x means multiple inputs we have let's say uh, along with the speed uh, there are so many obstacles in the in the road okay so you also have to face those obstacles so one is speed okay input another are the obstacles so there are more than one now inputs okay and based upon that uh, how much time will it take you to reach the office okay to the destination will be decided okay so this is called as multi-linear regression okay next basically logistic regression this is another type of regression logistic logistic reg reg regression works on probabilistic method okay it only tells you the possibility of you can see the diagram possibility of a a particular element to be in the red category or to be in the blue category okay so there there will be only two basically outputs either red or blue yes or no live or dead win or lose healthy or sick okay so you can see that only two outputs will be we will be getting with the logistic regression let's move towards the next algorithm that is the 20th one and that is naive based algorithm naive based algorithm okay this basically works on the concept of uh, conditional probability conditional probability means that uh, if something has already happened then what is the likelihood of something else to happen okay for example let's say if you already if you already had your breakfast and you are visiting your friend so how likely will you have uh, breakfast again okay will you have something again okay so because you already had your breakfast okay so if something has happened then what is the probability that something else will also happen okay so here uh, you can see that probability of a okay such that b has already occurred 
this is the meaning so again interpreting it here how often a happens given that b has happened or how often b happens given that a has happens this is the concept of bayes theorem okay fine so here we have concepts like this is called as a is called as posterior this probability is called as likelihood this probability is called as prior and probability of b is called as marginalization okay so these are the components inside bayes theorem now naive bayes okay in machine learning naive bayes classifier are family of simply probabilistic classifiers based on applying bayes theorem okay that we have seen and they are among simplest bayesian network models okay let's move ahead next one is dimensionality reduction techniques okay so linear discriminant analysis 21st algorithm so lda or linear discriminant analysis this basically reduces the dimension dimensions okay reduces the dimensions means here you can see in the diagram that uh, x1 and x2 we have two basically uh, x axis and y axis you can say and we have some uh, data points plotted on them okay now if we want to reduce the dimensionality okay and dimensions to one okay then what kind of output we will get we will get this kind of output but but this output is disregarding the useful information and it is reducing the information you can say okay so this is not a better approach so if you want then basically you can apply lda and lda approach you can see in the diagram what kind of approach lda is having okay it is considering x1 and x2 okay and it will basically finding the differences or distances between all the points okay so this is how basically it is uh, uh, it is it is uh, trying to uh, reduce the dimensions without losing the information okay so lda is dimensionality reduction technique okay so let's move towards the next one that is 22nd algorithm which is decision tree okay decision tree here in the diagram you can see that decision tree has got nodes okay so this is a node this is another node and at every node we have a question and that question decides that uh, under which branch okay under wait, what will be the next node okay let's see here in the in the example that here you can see that we have gray and blue leaves okay so gray okay so so uh, so a very high level gray is one class green is another class so that will be getting classified and we will get classified okay and uh, classification can be done on the size also so at every node we will ask a question and we will, we will keep on uh, classifying it okay so it becomes a tree uh, it's it's a opposite tree okay that uh, the roots are below in 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 a normal tree but here roots will be above and the branches will be down downwards okay nodes edges branches and leaf nodes these are the uh, components of a tree okay fine this is another example of a okay is a person fit about age we have asked first question yes no okay if yes then uh, whether the person is eating pizzas yes no okay and if it eats the pizzas okay then he is unfit okay so at every node we will have questions okay now uh, we can have a, a classification types of trees and regression type of trees okay here is an example okay classification we we will have uh, categorical values okay and in regression we will have continuous values this is the difference next algorithm that is the 23rd algorithm is k nearest neighbor algorithm okay k nearest it is basically it will identify the nearest neighbor nearest neighbor means let's say uh, let's say th there are people of different heights okay and uh, uh, the, 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 then we want to categorize them that height is low or they are tall okay uh, so so uh, whether they are tall or not this is something we are able to identify so let's say tall basically means 6 plus okay so 6 plus height is tall so we'll just identify uh, there is a new person coming in and we'll just uh, uh, match okay height with all of the people so if the height is matching up with 6 6.1 6.5 of the of the new person we'll put put that new person into the that he's he's tall okay so this is how the knn algorithm k nearest neighbor identify the class with the help of neighbors okay that is the algorithm next algorithm we have is neural networks okay under neural networks we'll have multiple algorithms okay so we'll see uh, like uh, 24 5 6 7 8 and 9 okay different neural networks we'll see okay so neural network is basically works on human neurons okay this uh, you can see that this is a human neuron and it has got dendrites okay dendrites nucleus synapse axon from another cell okay so axon is this particular tail okay so these dendrites they will keep on sending the information to other cells okay so let's see the this the architecture so we have some input input given to the neural network okay and there is an input layer okay these input layer perform some calculations okay and then here here are some hidden layers also and there can be multiple hidden layers and then we get the 
output finally okay so let's have the the basic that is feed forward neural network feed forward neural network means we give input data to the neural network and in feed forward here you can see we have only uh, one layer okay in one layer we have multiple you know neurons multiple nodes and these will accept this data and they'll perform some calculation and give the output this is simplest uh, form of neural network let's move ahead to the next one that is rbf radial basis function neural network okay so rbf it basically considers the distance point with respect to the center okay so in the diagram you can see that it is considering the distance point with respect to the center okay it has got two layers okay the first layer is basically where the features are combined with the rbf okay so rbf is a function so features will be combined with the rbf and then the output of these features are taken into consideration while computing the same output in the next time okay so that means that uh, features are combined with R rbf one thing and second thing is that this output will be preserved and it will be used in the next time calculation okay this is the second second one in new neurons only neural network only coherent self organizing neural network okay so self organizing neural network so here basically the neural network uh, organizes itself okay so that is the mechanism here the objective of a coherent map is to input vectors of arbitrary dimensions to discrete map comprised of neurons okay so this is something we are giving input to the coherent S uh, som okay self organizing neural networks or self organizing maps okay the map needs to be trained to create its own organization of training data okay own organization of training data so so remember okay so it is creating its own organization of training data okay so so this is a bit different from the previous ones which we have discussed next one is recurrent neural network rnn okay so uh, here you can see, uh, read one term long short term memory okay once you type something on your mobile it gives you recommendation the recommendation is based upon the based upon the past data you have inputted to it okay so this is how the recurrent neural network works that learning is and then it will basically give you an output that learning is fun okay so why fun came because it has preserved the previous memories okay this is basically con concept of recurrent neural network let's move towards the next one convolutional neural network okay it helps in signal processing and image classification okay so these are similar to feed for forward neural networks okay but they have learnable weights and biases in feed forward they, they were not having learnable weights and biases but convolutional neural network they have learnable weights and biases this is the difference modular ne neural network modular ne neural networks are uh, comprising of multiple uh, neural networks okay so different type of neural networks can come here and all together we can club them together to make up optimal solution so that is called as modular neural networks okay now moving towards the next one unsupervised learning algorithms okay so the 30th algorithm we have is okay k means algorithm before that let's discuss clustering okay clustering is basically creating groups but without labels we don't have input output uh, pairs to see upon okay so without labels we will do this and uh, mostly on the basis of distances or differences among the dimensions or parameters okay so th that is so k means algorithm okay here you can see in the diagram that we have different uh, data sets okay here we will see the differences or the distances so we have given colors so we will just try to compare that what are having which are having similar colors and on the basis of differences we will classify them similar colors we will put them together and different colors they will be separated apart okay so this is k means algorithm but we don't have any input output we are, we are just looking at the parameter and we are categorizing the data or creating groups okay next algorithm okay that is the 31st algorithm we have is a priori algorithm so a priori algorithm the best example is vegetable seller they will always keep the potatoes and onions together because they know that if somebody is buy, buying potatoes okay so out of 10 eight people will also so by onions as well so better to keep them together okay so this is the concept of how the items are associated with each other okay so we, we basically bring come up with association rules here okay so a priori algorithm it's it's again uh, 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 it, it works on association rules you can see here it works on association rules uh, the three major things here support confidence and lift okay so these are the three major things which are basically calculated in order to create association rules amongst the items next we have that is the 32nd we have is mixture models okay so mixture model uh, in, in statistics uh, we find uh, sub populations within the overall populations with the help of mixture models okay so here you can see this is the complete population we have and we are trying to identify the sub population here and the sub population here is cluster 1 is the sub population cluster 2 is the sub population cluster 3 is the sub population okay so three sub populations we are able to identify here so mixture model help us in identifying the sub populations next algorithm that is the 33 algorithm 
second algorithm we have density based clustering algorithm in short we call it as db scan algorithm okay so as the word you can see here it works on density okay it works on density so let's basically understand the two important uh, uh, points here we have we have min points and epsilon so min point is the minimum number of points okay clustered together for a region to be considered dense okay so how many points okay let's say three points or four points let's say four points we need to consider in order to call a cluster as cluster means group okay cluster as dense so here we have four points and with the help of four points we are considering the cluster as dense okay then epsilon the a distance measure that will be used to locate the point in the neighborhood of any point okay so distance measure that will be used to locate the points in the neighborhood of any point okay so let's say this is this is the core point the center point okay and this x unit is the distance to basically consider this particular uh, this particular data point to be a neighbor okay but if the distance is more then that will that is not an uh, that is not a neighbor okay so th that is epsilon the distance measure okay then we have the next algorithm 34th algorithm optic okay this is you can say a, a variant of density based cluster algorithm and it is known as ordering points to identify clustering structure okay optics so here the two additional concepts are there one is core distance and an another is reachability distance okay so core distance the minimum value of radius required to classify a given point as a core point okay this is addition and reachability distance this is another one okay so it is defined with respect to another data point okay the reachability distance between a point p and q is the maximum of the core distance of point p and euclidean distance okay or some other metrics uh, apart from equilibrium okay between p and q okay so reachability distance these two concepts are added in optics algorithm okay again it's a variant of density based algorithm next one we have which is the 35th algorithm it is basically hierarchy okay based algorithm so here we create here you can see one dendrogram this is called as a dendrogram we keep on creating hierarchies for all the elements okay and uh, if you cut the hierarchy from here okay then you can see that you have three clusters this is one cluster this is another cluster this is third cluster okay so again based upon the differences or the distances among the values which we have we keep on creating small small hierarchies then we basically uh, uh, remove the uh, reduce the threshold value and we we uh, club them together and further we club them together and finally if you don't cut them then the whole of the items fall under single cluster okay but if we cut the tree or this dendrogram uh, from a particular uh, uh, height then we will get number of clusters next one which is 36th algorithm is anomaly detection outliers we we had discussed in uh, in in the case of uh, uh, regression okay so this is basically from there so anomaly detection is uh, uh, outlier detection here we need to uh, identify the outliers okay so in the diagram you can see that we have certain values and in the certain values uh, we have some values which are falling quite away from the orange okay they are qu quite away from the uh, groups okay so the values which are away from the groups they are called as noise or outliers okay identifying that is called as anomaly detection okay let's go for 37th algorithm local outlier factor lof okay again a, a variant of anomaly detection so this basically identifies that local a local clustering is done okay local grouping is done and within the local grouping then we try to identify which are the far off elements from the local groups okay again they are called as local outliers okay then next one is encoders okay so encoders this comes under neural network neural network we had discussed under under the supervised approach but they also work for unsupervised approach okay so auto encoder this is basically used to learn efficient data codings in unsupervised manner the aim is to learn representation for a set of data typically dimensionality reduction okay so objective is dimensionality reduction by training the network ignore the signal noise okay so this auto encoder it is a neural network but it is again working for dimensionality reduction so we we had seen linear discriminant in case of supervised okay here we have encoder for dimensionality reduction okay let's have the next algorithm that is deep belief net so here you can see these are the deep belief nets okay the deep word is used because here we have lot of hidden layers okay and these hidden layers or hidden units basically help us to uh, calculate and give the output so here in the diagram you can see that we have rbms we have uh, uh, again one more layer of uh, rbms here and then we have logistic regression applied okay so once the input is applied then we have three different layers okay so it is a generative graphical model or or alternatively a class of deep neural networks composed of multiple 
layers of latent variables okay so here we have multiple layers and th th that is why uh, it is known as deep belief network okay fine now let's have the next one that is Hebbian learning this is the 40th and the last algorithm okay so Hebbian learning is inspired by the biological neural weight adjustment mechanism okay so so remember this thing biological neural weight adjustment mechanism it describes the method to convert neuron and inability to learn and enable it to develop cognition with response to stimuli okay so that, that is the concept here you can say a uh, subject to learning in the di diagram okay subject to heavy Hebbian learning and B here we have uh, a learner network here we have example generator and we have output network okay so it tries to create uh, examples okay and it responds to that and based upon the response it learns and then it pro produces a an output network okay this is basically heavy and learning okay thanks a lot for watching if you want to basically uh, discuss more algorithms okay please comment us we will come up with more such algorithms you can see that i have not covered from 41 to 51 because it was it was for basically uh, 40 uh, al algorithms we wanted to discuss uh, so please have a look at these 40 algorithms and write us back on comment what more algorithms do you want Thank you, thanks a lot. If you liked our video and would like to recommend it to your friends, please like, share and subscribe to Indeed Inspiring Infotech. We would also love to hear your suggestions and feedback in the comment section below.